Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're working on these two steel 028 AV super chainsaws. Uh, steel first came out with these in 1977. And the one here in the front, I believe Stanley has owned since new. You know, it has sentimental value and it was a good running machine up until recently. You know, he lent it to a friend and unfortunately his friend straight gassed it. So the engine burned up and of course his friend felt pretty bad. So he tried to make it right. You know, he took the saw completely apart, put it back together with new parts. And unfortunately he has no experience rebuilding saws. And according to Stanley, this one runs, but it has never run right since. So my hope today is that I can make it right. And we also have another back here. Actually, his friend bought him this when he realized that this didn't quite work out. So, you know, Stanley hasn't tried this one yet. It was purchased, used, I believe, off of Craigslist or Facebook, and I think was advertised as a good running machine. So that we will find out. So let me get you set up a little bit better and get going on this. I'm tempted just to put some fuel in this saw, actually both saws, and see where they're at. And I'm going to do that in a minute. But I think first I'm going to do a compression test on both these saws. Now two strokes, they need at least 100 PSI to run. If the compression is between 120 and 150, it should run pretty well. And of course a new saw, you're going to see numbers maybe close to 175. You know, this one, I'd be pretty happy with anything above 120. So, got the compression tester hooked up. I'm actually going to move this to the floor. It'll be a little bit easier uh, to pull the engine over. So, I'm going to open the throttle. We'll pull it a few times. Yeah, not too bad. 145 PSI. So this saw, I mean, it should run. You know, if compression was the only thing in play here, it would run pretty well. Of course, it's a two-stroke, and compression doesn't tell the whole story. So let's try the other saw, the one from Facebook. I think I'm just going to call this one the Facebook saw because having two saws that look identical... That plug was loose. You know, it could be a little confusing. So I actually labeled this saw as good, which I don't know if it is, but it was advertised that way. So we'll get the compression tester in, open the throttle, and we'll do the same test. All right, throttle's already open. And this one, actually about the same, 145, maybe a touch below. So from that point of view, you know, both of these saws should run with that kind of compression and run well, assuming we don't have any other issues. So let's get some fuel on these and try them out. It's nice this saw has a chain. Newer ones are just plastic. All right, in theory, we're ready to go. So I'm gonna leave this cover off. 
you know, I might want to make some adjustments on the car. We got the low speed screw closest to the engine, the high speed on the other side. And this screw, I believe, is to set the idle speed. So, yeah, let's choke the engine. We'll pull it a few times. Let's see what we get. Get something. Okay, well, doesn't sound terrible. Well, it definitely sounds better than I thought it would. Now, it was for sure running lean. So I did open up the low-speed jet a bit, and it started to sound a little bit better. So I'm going to start it again. I'm going to try to fine-tune it. Right now, we're about to turn out. And according to the cover, you know, that low-speed jet, at least the initial setting, is one and a quarter turns out. So we're actually pretty close. So yeah, let's start it again. We'll see if we can fine-tune this any better. It's almost acting like a carb issue. You know, it doesn't actually seem like we have any crank seals leaking. So, yeah, let's start it again. I'm gonna to try to play with that low speed needle a bit, see if we can get it to idle a little bit more reliably here.
Nope, doesn't like that. So we'll, I'm going to reset this to one and a quarter. Half, actually we'll set it back to one and maybe an eighth. Doesn't like coming off of idle. I see what Stanley means. It actually is very close to running right. The biggest issue is coming off of idle. You know, it stumbles quite a bit and stalls, especially if you let it idle for five or 10 seconds and then you try to bring it off. So, you know, I've tried fine tuning this low speed jet. Right now it is about a turn and an eighth out. You know, that seems to be where it's the happiest, but even like that, I can't really get it to come off of idle reliably. So, you know, it could be a carb issue, could be a seal issue. Yeah, that I am not sure yet. Anyway, let's move this one out of the way and we'll put some fuel in the other and see how this one does. Before I start this one, I'm going to check where these are set and we'll compare it to the other saw. So there's half a turn, one turn. So we'll set that back to one in the high speed. Half a turn. Yeah, three quarters of a turn. So yeah, that's not much. The recommended starting point is one and a quarter, but we'll set it back to three quarters. And let's get this one on the start position and see what we get. <laughs> wow. Wasn't expecting that second pull. I'm going to bring that idle up just a bit. That was quite a difference compared to the other saw. You know, after testing this one over here, I actually thought it was running pretty well, but you know, we had that idling issue. And after running this one, I can say for sure that one has issues because this one showed signs of life with the second pull. After a few more pulls, it started, it idled well, and you could let it idle for a bit and pull the trigger and it wouldn't fall on its face. Not only that, the trigger response is way better on this machine. So I would say the core of this is in very good shape. You know, it does need a tune up. It needs a clean up. And I think we might have issues with the oiling system too. You know, this bar remained pretty dry, but all that, they're fairly minor issues. So we'll set this aside. We'll come back to it later. You know, I want to focus in on this one. It's not running well. And what I noticed actually is that when adjusting the low speed jet, 
it didn't make a huge difference, meaning I could turn it a quarter turn one way or the other, and yeah, it would change the way it runs, but not like it did on this one. You know, this one I could see the change quite a bit better. So, you know, that's kind of telling me that we might have issues with seals on the engine block or on the crank shaft, but it could be something as simple as the carb, and that's an easy thing to swap out, and Stanley did include a clone one. So, you know, I say we start there. Let's do the easy thing. We'll put this on. We'll start it up again and see if it runs any better. Well, it should be fairly straightforward to get this carb swapped out. We just have these two nuts right here that hold the air filter in. So once these are loose, we can get the air filter out of the way. And then there's a couple more nuts holding the carb on the studs and a few lines to remove, and that carb should come right out. Yeah, we also have the throttle linkage, which on this saw is really easy to remove. You just lift it up, and then to get it out of the way, you just move the throttle plate, and it should drop down out of the way. You know, we have an impulse line right there, which should come off when we pull the carb off, and we actually have the fuel line right there, it's kind of hard to see. So I'm gonna to try to get that off now before we loosen the carb from the studs. Okay. That was very loose. So that right there could be the issue. Yeah, that one's loose too. It would be nice if it was that easy. Guess we'll find out in a minute. Because when I put this back together, you know, I'm going to torque those down properly. Ah. I think we need to get that idle set screw out. All right, let's try this new carb out. So, you know, putting it together, it's just as easy as taking it apart. So we'll carefully guide this in. We wanna make sure the impulse line goes on this barb properly. So that is on just fine. Let's try to get the fuel line on. All right, few lines on. The filter that came off of this saw, it's pretty clogged up and definitely needs to be replaced. So something like this would or could cause a run issue. You know, I would think the issue though would be at higher RPM, which this saw is actually running well at high speed. So, you know, I doubt this is it, uh, but the carb kit did come with a new filter. So we'll get that installed in that one's place. And then I'm gonna double check the needles, just make sure they're each about a turn out. And then we'll try to start it. All right, let's double check where these jets are at. Now, it's a clone carb, so the one and a quarter recommendation may or may not apply to this carb. You know, I guess all bets are off. But let's see where it's set initially. So the low speed is half, one, about one turn. So that is a good starting point, so we'll set that back. 
and the high speed. There's half one, half two, two turns out. So yeah, that was a little too much, I think. So we'll set that to one. So they're both set to one. Now the idle screw, you know, I backed that way off. So we'll turn that in a bit, but until the saw is running, you know, we can't really fine tune this. So let's give that a try. All right, let's give this a try. I'm gonna lock the throttle in the open position. Choke is also on. All right, we're getting something. Let me open up the low speed a little bit and give it a little bit more on the idle set. So I'm gonna put it in high idle, but choke off. Doing the same thing. Well, I'd say it's running different, but not necessarily better. You know, this time it's still having a bit of issue coming off of idle. You know, the engine doesn't really have a good response. And now when running at high speed, it seems to be a little bit lean. So yeah, still having trouble tuning the carb. So I'm leaning strongly toward an issue with the crankcase seal. So, you know, we're gonna check that in a minute, but I do wanna try this one more time. And I realize I haven't really described the process of what I'm doing here. You know, first of all, you need to get the saw running or you can't tune it. You know, once it's running, adjust the idle set speed. You wanna bring the speed up so that the chain just starts to move. And once it's moving, you can adjust the low speed needle. You wanna find the sweet spot where the engine is running the fastest. Once you find that spot, you wanna open it up slowly counterclockwise until the engine speed starts to slow down. You know, once you hit that point, bring the idle speed down if the chain is still spinning, you know, get the saw running at a good speed and that should be it. You know, the low speed and the idle are set at that point and then it's just a matter of revving it up. 
double checking the top speed, you know, this saw is rated at 12,500 RPM, you know, and make adjustments as needed to that high speed screw to make sure you don't exceed that. Anyway, let's, um, let's try to start it one more time. We'll go through that process again. I'm going to get you in a little bit closer so you can kind of see a bit better what's going on. I'm just bringing the idle back up, make it a little bit easier to start. Let's make sure this is in the run position, which it seems to be. Yeah, definitely not responding well to tuning. So I think we do have a leak somewhere in the system. And, you know, for two strokes, you can't have a leak anywhere in the crankcase. If this was a four-stroke engine and it had a leak, you'd see oil dripping on the ground. You know, in this case, the bottom end of the engine is actually part of the intake. So when the piston goes up, it creates a vacuum in the bottom end, and that sucks the air-fuel mixture into the bottom of the engine. And when the piston goes back down, it pushes that up into the combustion chamber where it's ignited. And if there is a leak somewhere in the engine, then what happens is that instead of pulling air fuel metered through the carburetor, it pulls air from somewhere else outside the saw. So it's getting less fuel and it's also inconsistent as far as how much fuel and how much air it gets on each stroke. So I'm gonna let the saw cool down and then we're gonna do a pressure and vacuum test and see if we can't find the leak. So while the saw is cooling down, we can actually start work here on the intake side of things. You know, I'm gonna use part of a tube just to block the intake. So I'm gonna sandwich it between the carb and the engine and then once the exhaust cools down, we'll do the same on that side. And then we'll use that impulse line on the carburetor to do the pressure and the vacuum test. So I cut up this piece of rubber kind of in a wedge shape and you want it to fit and completely cover the intake manifold. So this we will slide back in. We can leave the fuel line disconnected and this impulse line, we kind of have to kick it off to the side so that we can tap into that later.
I'm going to take a second and just get this plastic cover off because this piece right here kind of overhangs the exhaust and it's going to make it difficult to kind of sandwich that piece of rubber in between the exhaust and the engine with this in the way. In theory, we should be sealed up now that we've added this piece of rubber between the carb and the intake manifold and this one between the exhaust and the engine head. You know, the spark plug's been re-added. The only place that we should be leaking from is the impulse line. And we're going to use that to build pressure and pull a vacuum. Now, assuming we have a leak, which I think we do, you know, I'm not going to be able to find it right now because the engine, we don't really have good access to it, but I do want to confirm we have a leak before kind of pulling everything off the engine to kind of get to the bottom of where the pressure is going. So let's pump this up to seven PSI and it should be able to hold that. And right now we're at four PSI and I cannot build pressure past that. It's leaking out too fast. So if I stop pumping, you see that needle's dropping. So yeah, definitely have a leak. You know, we don't even need to do the vacuum test, but let's try. So I'm gonna pump this up to about 15 inches of mercury and it's going down very slowly so yeah for sure you know we have a leak somewhere in this crankcase so let's tear this saw down kind of get the engine fully exposed and find where that leak is
Gonna have to do this the hard way. The snap ring pliers, they're broken. You're supposed to be able to switch it between, you know, snap rings that you pull in tight to get them out and ones like this where you have to stretch it. And in this case, we're stuck in the wrong mode. But it can still be used. I hope. Ah, uh, okay. That makes sense. I wasn't sure what the snap ring was doing, but now I see. So we should be able to get this gear out of the way. This is for the oil pump. So to get the flywheel off, you do need to lock up the engine. You know, I'm going to use a piston stop and a, and a wrench, just a socket, three quarter inch. And these are opposite. So righty is actually loosey in this case. Anyway, I'm not going to use an impact on this because this is metal on metal. And actually, either we're at the top or we have the wrong threads. Yeah, I think we were at the top. So yeah, what I was saying is you don't want to use an impact with a piston stop because it's just going to hammer the piston against the piston stop. So if you do want to use an impact, I'd recommend filling the cylinder with rope. You know, a nice nylon braid rope. Just enough so that the piston can't get over top dead center. So Right now, we should be pretty much ready to go. I'm just going to turn this until the piston kind of lightly seats against the piston stop, which is right there. And then we'll crank down. Yeah, I'm noticing the end of the crankshaft, it's a little bit messed up. You know, I don't think it's going to affect anything. The Eclipse still goes on there just fine. It's kind of surprising though. I thought this was a new crankshaft. So yeah, maybe it was just the top end that was done on this. That was loose. All right, now we have access to the seal that was behind the clutch. And on first look, it doesn't look bad. I mean, sometimes you can tell when there's a lot of two-stroke oil around the seal. And in this case, I am not seeing that. Really, the only thing that looks a little bit off is that the seal is driven in a little bit more on the bottom than the top. You know, otherwise it looks pretty good. So, you know, we have one more crank seal on the other side. Uh, behind the flywheel and to remove this safely you should use the proper tool you know i don't have that tool you know i could use a center punch or something else to shock the flywheel off the tapered shaft but you know i think i'm gonna wait you know i did order the proper tool it'll be here tomorrow so i don't want to force it and cause any damage so while we wait for that you know i think we should pressure test this again we have a lot better access to kind of see a lot of things so maybe we can identify the problem without actually pulling that flywheel 
All right, I've got the spark plug back in. We'll just put some soapy water here by the seal and apply a bit of pressure. Now, if this was the problem, we'd see bubbles coming out kind of around the seal, either on the outer race or the inner race. And in this case, we're seeing nothing. Uh, but I do hear the leak, actually. You know, it sounds like it's coming from this area. So it might be the base gasket, uh, potentially the intake boot. So, yeah, let me get you resituated. We'll try to zoom in over here and spray some water, see if we can find the issue. I think I might have found the issue here. If you look in here, there is a metal strap that goes around the intake boot. And if you look at the bottom, it doesn't look like that intake boot is on properly. So I'm thinking that might be the leak. So yeah, let's spray that. We'll apply some pressure and see if that is in fact where we're losing pressure. All right, now we'll add some pressure. And I think you can see the problem right there. We have a massive intake leak. And yeah, the saw is never gonna run right like that. So let's try to fix that issue and then we'll redo the pressure and the vacuum test. And with any luck, we might make out easy on this one. I think to gain access to that intake boot, we actually have to remove the carburetor. The intake boot is attached to the airbox, so there is a flange back there we should remove. And then we actually have to remove the airbox, which is part of the whole handle assembly. So to get this off, we need to remove a screw right there and there's two on the other side. Once those are removed, you know, this whole airbox handle assembly should come out of the way, and then we'll have good access to that intake boot. Okay, that's gone. Okay, now we have the access we need. And how was that saw running at all? I mean, that just fell right off. So, yeah, uh, easy fix, right? Doesn't seem to be ripped. Just not installed right. right let's see if we can get this on the right way. So this is loose. And the correct orientation is that you want it to be facing up and to the right.
Now I'm guessing whoever put this together may not have done this until after they had the handle on and they just couldn't couldn't get it to install properly. So it seems like we're fully on. So we'll add that strap back and put this back together. So what do you think? Are we going to be able to hold 7 PSI? You know, last time we couldn't get above 4. It was leaking too fast. Uh, this time, not so much. We're holding steady. So, yeah, I dare say this might be fixed. Let's just double check the vacuum side. We had a very slow vacuum leak before. We shouldn't have any. So right now we're at 15 inches of mercury. And we're steady. So, yeah, I think I think the saw is going to run well. So, let's get it back together and find out. I want to make sure I tighten this clutch up properly. When I took it off, it was quite loose and it should actually be tightened to 49 Newton meters. So I'm going to use the digital torque wrench. It can torque left hand thread, which is what we need in this case. Beautiful. You know what? Did that in the wrong order. So I've got to get this on first, then the washer and the E-clip.
and made a trip to the store. Got some snap ring pliers that actually work. So before I put the coil back on, I actually need to repair the kill wire. This wire is supposed to be attached down there. There's this little piece right here, which I believe we can slide out. So I'm going to try to remove it, see if we can reattach it, and then we'll get the ignition system back together. So the way it works is that this piece right here, it's attached to this wire, which is a source of ground. You know, the other end is attached to the engine block. And this piece right here is supposed to have the kill wire on it. So when you put it in the off position, the two make contact. When you turn the saw on, it moves this piece out of the way like that. So I'm thinking we should be able to slide this out, which will make the repair a little bit easier. So this piece right here, it looks like it used to be soldered on, although not very well. So yeah, as far as repairing it goes, I might try using an electronic soldering iron. I don't, I don't know if it's going to be enough. So if it's not, we can upgrade to a small torch and that should definitely do it. I think I'm actually going to skip ahead here and just go right to the torch. The electronic soldering iron, you know, it's likely going to not be up to the task. There's just too much thermal mass here. And the torch should make quick work of it.
Just gonna double check the flywheel nut. It should be torqued to 29 Newton meters. Gonna pull off this clone carb and go back to the OEM one because it actually ran the engine pretty well, even with that intake leak. Last but not least, we have a brand new NGK plug. So we'll get that in. You know, both the needles, they've been reset to one turn out. So we'll give it a few pulls and hopefully the problem's fixed.
much, much better. You know, this time it would idle, it would come off of idle without falling on its face, and it would rev up without issue. Uh, the carb also responded well to tuning. So I dare say, you know, I think this saw is fixed. So we just need to throw the airbox back on and this thing is ready to be put to work. Uh, but to that end, I'm actually waiting on an OEM filter. This clone filter, it's not very good quality. It's just a screen material and the OEM one actually has filter media on it and will do a much better job. So we'll give it a day or two for that to arrive. And while waiting for that, I do wanna turn my attention to that saw over there. Although the engine runs well, I didn't see any oil on the chain. So I wanna take a quick look and make sure we don't have an issue there. So on this Facebook saw, you know, I'm thinking or hoping that things are just clogged up back here. I do see a bunch of old oily sawdust. So we'll start with cleaning that out and then we'll test again for oil flow. And I think you can see this is where the oil comes out, I think. And it's pretty dirty, so let's blow that out. And actually, I'm going to pull the spark plug. We'll just pull the engine over, see if we can see any oil coming out. I think I support it there. Yeah, actually, I was wrong. The port on the bar is right there. And when you install the bar, it aligns with this channel right here. So there is a little hole there. And I don't remember that being clogged. It actually looks okay on the bar. So, yeah, spark plugs are moved. Let's just pull it over, see if any oil comes out of there. Yeah, I think we're okay. There is oil coming out. So we know the pump's working and it's picking up oil from the tank. So I think we're okay. So it's been a few days and the new OEM filter showed up today. So I want to get this clone one out and we'll put the OEM one in. You can see quite a big difference as far as the amount of protection, you know, this one offers versus the clone. So, you know, especially when using a chainsaw, it's pretty dusty and dirty. You want to have a good filter.
I think we'll test the saws on this tree right here. It actually fell a few years ago and I started to cut it up and I think both the saw and I ran out of gas. So this is a bit overdue. Anyway, I'm going to use the Facebook saw first. I did put a sharp edge on the chain, so I'll make a few cuts, just make sure there's no surprises there. And then we'll switch over to Stanley's, see how that one does. No issues to report. Started real easy, had no problems idling, and it powered through those cuts without issue. And I can see the chain. It is being oiled, so the Facebook saw, I would say, is 100%. So I'm gonna set this one aside. We'll try the same test with Stanley's saw. I cut the test short because Stanley's saw, even though it has the new chain, was cutting noticeably slower than the Facebook saw. So I want to double check the speed. You know, these engines are rated at 12,500 RPM max. So I'm thinking Stanley's is slow and possibly the Facebook one is fast. So I'm actually going to start with the Facebook one. We'll see what the max speed is, adjust it as necessary, and then do the same for Stanley's.
Well, guys, that's pretty much a wrap. You know, Stanley Saw is up and running again and running pretty well. You know, that said, though, the Facebook Saw, I think, is running better. You know, it's making the cut consistently faster than Stanley Saw. And there could be a few reasons for that. You know, I guess the biggest one in my mind is that, you know, although Stanley Saw was rebuilt, it was rebuilt using clone parts. And that alone, I would say, could make the difference. So, I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.